Obsessive compulsive disorder is a mental illness that affects around 2% of the population, which is one in every 40 adults. The main symptoms of OCD is having recurring intrusive thoughts and repetitive behaviours that you cannot control. I've lived with OCD for as long as I can remember. However, it's only within the past few months that I even realised I had it. And by that time, it was the worst it's ever been, almost debilitating sometimes. I decided to make this documentary about OCD to show the realities of living with this too often trivialised disorder. To help me explain in a bit more detail about what OCD is and how it can affect individuals, I spoke to a few different people about it. Firstly, Ashley Fullwood, who is not only an OCD sufferer himself, but he is also one of the founders of the charity OCD UK. He shared with me this all too common experience. Around the year 2001, 2002, when I lived and worked in London by that point, that I actually decided to go and do anything about it. I went to a GP in East London, which is where I lived, um, and said, I've got OCD. And the GP said, what's OCD? Um, which of course, ah, yeah, um, completely threw me. That must have been difficult. Um, I'm sorry you went through that. Yeah, yeah, and, and even now there's still problems. You know, we still get people report to us that you know, they have comments from GPs like, well, you don't wash your hands, so you can't have OCD. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to the millennium, 1999, if that had been said, yeah, all right, under we understand, there's not a great deal of awareness. But to get that over the last few years, it shows that we've still got so much more work to do, that OCD isn't just about hand washing and cleaning. It's my OCD, but it isn't just about that. Yeah, that's... OCD is about intrusive thoughts. Could you tell me a bit about the different types of OCD? People have obsessions and worries about cleansiness uh, and it's not it's not just that so for example it's not just that people are worried about cleansing it's about the consequences of that that of, again often gets overlooked so some people might think well if I don't protect myself from germs I'm going to pass germs to my loved ones and they're going to die and that's what gives OCD power the fact that there's a ultimately there's a severe consequence there uh, for other people, it's about checking. They check the gas stove or the lights or the doors a lot. They're worried about people breaking in uh, or the ass burning down. And again, that's the face of OCD. But beyond that, there's more consequences. They're worried about what if precious memories and treasures get destroyed or stolen. I can never replace them. And that's what gives OCD power. Some people have what we call intrusive thoughts, which can be quite horrific and aggressive, such as harm coming to a loved one. Uh, inc uh, including sexual and violent nature, it doesn't mean those people are going to carry out those threats. So actually, the least likely people to carry out those threats. But what it means is because they're sensitive to that, they're worried that that might happen. So if you can imagine some of the worst thoughts that you could have as an individual, imagine those thoughts there 24-7. Uh, and, and that's why often people misunderstand those things and, and trivialise it because they don't realise it's a disorder. And what that means is by being a disorder, it means it impacts on the person's quality of life and thoughts bombarding you 24 seven that are horrific. You know, that, that's not just impacting on you, that's destroying you as an individual. Our conversations about OCD were really informative and Ashley had a lot of very important points to make, including this statistic, which he brought to my attention. It's important to say that only around 24, 25% of people with OCD have issues around cleaning. If this is true, then why do the majority of people only know about contamination OCD, 
when there's almost an infinite amount of other types and flavours that around 75% of people with OCD suffer with. The media has a massive part to play in the spread of harmful depictions and misinformation about mental health conditions. OCD isn't about the ritual, whether that be checking, cleaning. It's always driven by an unwanted intrusive thoughts. So that's, that's why there's two parts to OCD, the obsessions and the compulsions. And, and it, you know, the, the rituals aren't done because we like them, we're doing them because we, have, we feel that we have to do them to prevent this bad thing happening. Um, so, so, so that's important. And yeah, the, the media focus on OCD as being a, a, a choice, if you like, a personality trait, um, something that's enjoyable. We do this because we like things clean in a certain way, that we like our house to be perfectly tidy. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. I had a conversation with my mum the other day and I told her for the first time the nature of my intrusive thoughts. So basically it's not nice to talk about but like if I don't like turn the taps on and off three times I think you and Dave are gonna die or something. Yeah so it's like quite horrific to not do it especially because everyone with OCD knows that, that you're being crazy and you're like, no, like, I'm not God. Turning the tap on and off three times isn't going to do anything. But then you still have to do it just in case, just in case. Because if you do die, then that's on me. Yeah. To get a better understanding of the realities of living with OCD, I spoke to another OCD sufferer. Hi, I'm Bronte and I have OCD. It's frustrating and, like, you want to be able to stop it. So it's just a lot of breakdowns, really. And then you're falling out with your family all the time over little things and they don't understand why it's, like, important to you. It's just really frustrating. And then... Is the fact you can't just go to bed, you can't, you can't just go straight to sleep, you have to look at everything. And then it's, I don't know, it's just like annoying how you can't just think it's okay. And it's every single day you're getting upset about something that's important to yourself. <laughs> My chat with Bronte was very insightful in confirming how much of an impact and a daily struggle and trauma living with this disorder can have on an individual. There have been many studies to show that a lot of cases of OCD are genetically passed down. I found this very interesting as my mum, who has never been formally diagnosed with OCD, has spoken to me numerous times about having very similar symptoms to me when she was younger. Even down to having the same type of intrusive thoughts about if I don't do this compulsion, then my whole family is going to die or the world is going to end. I recorded a conversation we had about why she never seeked any professional help for OCD. And here's what she said. It's just something I thought myself. Yeah. So I have shoved things into corners and... Yeah, I don't let myself think about things. Why do you think you didn't get any help? Well, because in my day, there was no such thing as OCD. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there was, but I'd never heard of it. I didn't know what it was. I thought I was just a bit, little bit odd. with little strange obsessions. Yeah. Um, my mother always said I was a bit odd, so that was it. I was a bit odd. <laughs> and it wasn't so out of control that I couldn't control it. You know, just certain things. I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous. You need to stop this. And I'd fight it, and some days I'd win, and some days... It would win. OCD can affect all parts of a person's life. Um, now, my intrusive thought, for example, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest about this. Uh, I'm embarrassed talking about this, so um, it is of an adult nature. Um, but these days, my OCD is sort of fixated on one thing, which is a fear of sexual body fluids. And I worry that I'm disgusting if I don't shower. If I'm, you know, if I've got any body sexual body fluids on me, um, one of the things that I do is I avoid any kind of sexual interaction, either with on my own or with other people, um, and probably is partly why I'm still single. I will. I can't go somewhere far away because if I get scared, for instance, because of that, I've always had my mom just like sleeping next to me. If I get too scared. And then I have to check, check the rooms and everything. Like, 
I went to York University because it was like a half an hour, 40 minute drive away. So if, whenever I got like, like a freaked out or something, my mum was there to go. So I couldn't go to, I wanted to go to Edinburgh University, but I couldn't, I can't go too far away from my family or well, my mum. Yeah. Like, so I get too, too freaked out. Yeah. That must be difficult. Yeah. You get used to it. Having obsessive compulsive disorder is not being a bit of a perfectionist. It's not being a neat freak or a person that loves cleaning. There is nothing individuals with OCD love about the disorder because it is a disorder and not a personality trait. It affects people's work lives, their education, their motivation, their relationships, their love lives, their family, as can any disorder, except for some reason people seem to trivialise this one, which is why you need to be educated on the realities of obsessive compulsive disorder.